Hello guys and welcome back to episode 6 of my tutorial series. Another Red Power tutorial. I know you guys might be sick of this, but uh, I'm not. I really enjoy all these neat circuits and all the things you can build with Red Power. So today I'm going to be mainly talking about all the gates that come with Red Power, as you can see. So it's more of these circuits, and then some more complex circuits that are all wrapped up into, you know, a neat little block. So let's get started. The first one is a knot gate. Most of these recipes are almost exactly the same. So I'm going to rush through them pretty quickly. One stick, five stone, six redstone dust. They're all mainly made up of these components that I have here. Practically. Don't know them by heart, but uh, if I go and type in gate here, you have all these little gates. So first we're going to be talking about the knot gate. This one right here. Recipe. So, we're going to need a cathode here. Anodes here. Which makes sense. Some wire, and then some stone wafers. As you can see, most of the time whenever you look at these, it, it's a... Uh, whatever these components are will make up the gate whenever you place them down. So as you can see, we've got three anodes, which are kind of like outputs. We've got one input, and then we've got an inverter, this cathode here, and then we've got blanks here on the sides. So we'll go and bring one of these knot gates out here. Let's go and place it over here. Knot gate. As you can see, we've got an inverter, and then we've got outputs right there. Which makes sense. So we've got an input, and then we've got three outputs, which are always the opposite of the input, whether it be low or high. So it's pretty simple. Not gate, really simple, easy to understand. Red wire. A red alloy. Oh, just wire. There we go. That way I don't run out of the wire that I'm going to be needing. Next one is the ore gate. Or the, the ore gate. This one has two inputs. Two sticks, five stone, and five redstone dust. So let's go and see. Or gate. So we've got inputs. And we've got cathodes here, and then we've got wafers. So here's our OR gate. So we'll go and place it right here. So I think we've got three inputs here. Actually, I should have moved it. Let me move it one more over. So right now we've got three inputs and then one output. An OR gate means if all of them are low, the output will be low. Oh yeah. Most of this is going to be engineering, you know, talking, practically. So, we're mainly going to be dealing with a with, uh, truth table, should I say. That, that mainly, you know, you've got you know a set number of inputs, and what, whatever those combinations of inputs will get you, you know, a determined output. It's like with an OR gate, if one of them is high, no matter which one it is, the output will be high. But if all of them are off, like they are now, then the output will be off. So if I turn on one of these, it'll turn on the input. It'll turn on the output. Doesn't matter which one. Even if two of them are on. Three of them. It's an OR gate. An OR gate is if one of them is on, then the output is on. Then we've got a NOR gate. Wait. One stick, six stone, eight redstone dust. Still pretty much the same 
using these same components to make them. So we've got a NOR gate. Practically the same, except we've got an anode, which is the... The anodes are the opposite of, practically. So whenever you're making these, you've got, we're going to have three inputs, and then our output here will be inverted. So here's our NOR gate. So if I were to go and replace this OR gate with a NOR, I'm going to go place this one out over here. If all of them are low, the output will be high. But as soon as one of them turns on, the output will be low. Just like that. Doesn't matter which number of them. Just as long as one of them is high, the output will be low. So it's the opposite of an OR gate. When one of them is high, then the output will be high. If all of them are off, then the output will be off. This one's the same. When all of them are off, the output will be high. So it's kind of like saying you've got a NOT gate right there. It's practically the same. This right here, this NOR gate, is the same as this right here. So as, so as soon as I turn on this one, you know, the output will be off. Bam. These two put together makes this one single block. Pretty neat, eh? Now we have an AND gate. Four sticks, five stone, nine redstone dust. An AND gate. Let me guess. That's an OR gate. AND gate. So it's a little bit different. If you've ever played with any kind of redstone at all, then you're probably, you know, getting really giddy with these new gates. Because I'm going to build an AND gate using regular vanilla redstone, too. Let's say if we had vanilla redstone. We're also going to need some of that. Actually, some of that. Whoops. Wrong thing to get rid of. And then all of that. Okay. Let's say if I were to make an AND gate with vanilla redstone. I have to remember how to build it. It's been a while. Remember, it's something like this, I think. Or something like that. This would be an in inverter. As soon as this one goes high, then those go high. Well, I don't remember how to build a... Uh, <laughs> I don't remember how to build a uh, vanilla redstone, because it's been so long. But as you can see, to make like an inverter, you know, you it would be, you know, a lot of stuff. Oh, I, I think I did build it. I just had the outputs backwards. Remember it being something like this, yeah. These right here would be your inputs. And then this, whoop, this one would be your output. So this would be like an AND gate. Whenever this one is high, and this one, no. Nope. Oh, I don't remember how to build it. <laughs> But it's uh, it requires a lot of blocks and a lot of space just to make one AND gate. And all these are condensed into like one single block. Like that. And the great thing about, you know, all these circuitry is so that you can put them on the ceiling, the walls, anything you want. Now an AND gate states that all of them must be uh, high for the output to be high. So if we have activated three of these, all three of these would need to be high. Bam, bam, bam. Now the output is high. So they all need to be on for the output to be high. No matter what combination, you know, the output will stay off unless of all of them. Unless of all of them are high. 
like so. Ah. Now you can adjust this uh, AND gate with our screwdriver that I that I got rid of. No, screwdriver uh, rotates it. That's right. Screwdriver will rotate it. If you right click it, oh, with nothing in your hand, I think, or control right click. No, control right click with the screwdriver. Yeah, control right click with the screwdriver will disable some of the inputs. So you like it disabled this one. So now both of these need to be high for that one to be high. So it determines how many inputs you have and which ones. So now the middle one's disconnected and now the left one's disconnected. And now only this one controls it. So right now it's kind of acting like a buffer. It'll hold this input. Now all of them are required. That one's pretty swell. Now what's the opposite of it? Well that would be a NAND gate, a not AND. Pretty much if you had the AND gate right there, and you put a NOT gate onto it, then that would be the opposite of it. However, you can condense it into one little block. Three sticks, five stone, eight redstone dust. Let's look at it. The NAND gate. That's a Zor gate. Let's see, NAND gate. There we go. So it's pretty much the same, except you replace this one with this one. Now we've got a NAND gate. Sweet. Now, this one's the opposite. All of them have to be high for the output to be off. Just like that. So no matter which ones are off, so if all of these are off, or a couple of them are on, the output will always stay high. However, once all of them get turned on, the output will be low. And then like with the screwdriver, you can control right click, or shift right click, you can disable the inputs. How many inputs that you, you, that you want. So right now this one's a three input, you can just you can set it to you know two input or a one input. And then that are NAND gates. So we've just go so we've d discussed NOT gates, OR gates, and AND gates. There's also things called exclusive OR gates or XOR gates. These are pretty neat too. Exclusive ore. Three sticks, five stone, and ten redstone dust. Uh, Xor gates. Recipe. Put it in. So you can see these are getting more and more complex, and they require a little bit more resources. Just a little bit. So we put our cathodes, our anodes, and then our wire. Now we have an exclusive ore gate. Exclusive ore. So this one's a little bit more complex. So as you can see, we've got two inputs and then one output. So an exclusive ore states that if both of them are low, or if both of them are high, the output will be low. However, if one of them turns on but not the other, then the output will be high. It's saying one of them can be on but not both of them, pretty much, one way or the other. So you can see if both of them are low, the output would be low. If both of them are high, the output would be low. However, if only one of them is on, the output will be high. So I turn off this one and turn on this one. Now it's high. I don't think there's any screw drive functionality with it. Nope. Now there's also the opposite of it. The exclu the not exclusive or. Or Xor. Or XNOR. Or exclusive nor. Four sticks, five stone, ten redstone dust. It's pretty much the exact same recipe. Except let's see if I can do this right. No, I probably don't remember it. 
Yep, it's practically the same. We just remove the stone wire, and we put a cathode right there. There's our exclusive Nora gate. And we go and replace it. So this was this one's saying, if one or the other, if one of the inputs is high, then the output would be low. Doesn't matter which one is on, but if one of them is on, then the output would be low. However, if both of them are off, the output will be high. Or, if both of them are on, the output will be high. Now let's say if you've had, I don't know, a couple of these NOR gates. This XORs, these exclusive ORs. Uh, let's say six. Let's say you have two of them. Let's see if I can wire this up right. So these are the outputs. What happens if... Let's say I grab this one. I'm going to need some cover strips. And I'll go more into detail how to get these in a later episode. Whenever I cover micro blocks and their functionality, but I kind of need them right now. I should have had this one out anyway. Let's say you had some of these. And all you guys in engineering might know what I'm building here. Let's say we got grab this output and have it be one of our inputs over here. Let's also grab... I'm going to have to build this one up and over. Let's grab this output here. And bring it over here. That's where my cover strips come and play. Haha. <laughs> so as you can see. This output of this one is one of the inputs for this one, and vice versa. One output for there goes into that one. And then let's say we have two switches here. This right here is an RS NOR latch. Let's go and put a bunch of... Uh, lamps out of here. Or the basis of a RS nor latch. As soon as I turn this one on, it'll remember its output. Well, Minecraft does some really weird things, but it should remember its input, like this. As you can see, I turned this on once, and it made the output high. So right now it's remembering that its input is high. So right now it's been set. Now I can reset it. I've reset it. And then I can also set it again. I've set it. Reset. And if both of these are high, there'll be no change. Right now it's going back and forth. But as you can see, there's no change. I think bo both of them are high as an on per minute state. There we go. All of this can actually be condensed into one single block, called an RS latch. Two sticks, five stone, and ten redstone dust. It's also, you know, called set and reset. You know, circuit. Latch. RS latch. Let's look at the recipe. You 
You might also remember these by, you know, RS Snorlatch or something like that. You might have seen it in Minecraft. This is kind of like the basis of memory. It, it, it's, an, it's a thing that remembers its input and output. Now, I have to remember which one is its. Uh, so I think you have all of them be connected. I just have to remember which one's the input and which one's the output. So if I go and put my. Where's my levers? There's my levers. I think this is one of the. This one's an output. That one's an output. So these are the inputs. Right here. Right now it's been set. I can... That one's set. So this one will set it. And right now if both of these are low, then uh, it'll remember its input. However, I can reset it. I've now reset it. Now, both of these are low. No matter if these are high or low. I can... Switch this one, nothing happens. Now I can switch it to this one, and then I can set it. Oh no. This one's a, more, a little bit more confusing block. So it pretty much switches in between these two. Okay. So this one's... Okay. So this one will set it. I reset it, and then we'll set it. If both of these are high, then weird stuff will happen, but it doesn't really matter. Right now it's been set, then you can reset it. Set it, reset. And then this one's always the opposite of it. And you kind of think of this as uh, reset, this one's will be set, and then this one's your output, and then this one's not your output. It's the opposite of it. Really cool circuit. And then you can go and do something even better than that, called a transparent latch. Or known as a D flip-flop for circuits. Five stone, six, or five sticks, six stone, eleven redstone dust. Transparent latch. Got all of our wire, our wafer, and then our anode. Transparent latch. Now this one m might require a clock input, but I'm not sure if it needs it or not. So this one's a little bit more complicated. With this one, we've got an enable and disable. So it could enable the circuit and disable it. And then we've also got a... Uh, a uh, what is it? A D input, which is our data, which is either high or low. And then, deter and then if the enable is higher or, or low, we'll determine if it'll stay the same, or it'll change it based on the data. Or, it might toggle. No, 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 it won't toggle. So here I'm going to have to decide which one's the input, which one's the output. That one makes no difference. This one might be the enable. Maybe once I get all of these with switches and throw, flipping them all on, I can decide which one's the input and which one's the output. So I think this one's the enable. Nope. Yeah, that one is definitely the enable. And then this right here is your D. So whenever this one's on, it'll let whatever D is be the output. Will be these two will be the output. And then if I disable it, no matter what D changes, it'll 
remember whatever it was once last. Like so. So as soon as it, I enable the circuit, it'll now go back low. See? It's kind of like this one will allow changes to, to this signal. Well, this one is the data, so if you can have this one be pulsing or something like that. It won't change unless if you enable it. And once it's enabled, this one will control the output, like so. Disable, and it'll remember what it, what it was once last, until it enables again. Usually, usually uh, this, you, this, this is usually run on a timer. And whenever it pulses on, then it'll uh, remember its input. So, like, let's say if I had a timer here. Let me disable it first. So, you've got a timer here set up. Every two seconds, it'll pulse. So, right now, nothing happens. So, what happens if this one becomes on? Hey, look, it remembers it. Now it's off. It remembers it, and as long as this one stays on, it'll remember it. But let's say if I cut off the signal, it won't turn off until the timer hits it. Pretty neat, eh? And this would be this one would be a flip flop now, because now it has a timer input or a clock input. So whenever this one becomes enabled, it'll write in new memory or change its states based on the data, which is this one. So now it's off. It won't change until the enable becomes high. Pretty cool, eh? Next we have a multiplexer. Pretty neat circuit. Four sticks, five stone, nine redstone dust. Multiplexer time. Multiplexer. Maybe I should actually be inside the thing. Okay, so we need a bunch of cathodes, a whole bunch of anodes, one wire, and then one one wafer. So we now we have a multiplexer. I'm gonna go and turn off this uh, timer here. Okay. I'm almost out of wire. Wire. And I have to remember the inputs and then the outputs. think those two are the inputs. This one, and this one. Whenever both of these are high, no. What a multiplexer is, it's got a... it's got inputs. And usually only one output. Yeah, that's right. There we go. So this one controls that output. All right, now you've got you know your your things right here. I can rotate it. There we go. And I can switch it to which ones are it. I can switch it to this one, and then that one controls it. Okay, there we go. This one will determine. This switch right here, this one switch will determine. Which one, which one of these, this one or this one, will get its output? So based on this signal, whether it be high or low, you can see it right here. Right now, this one's low. So this one, wherever it's pointing, will control the output. So this one right here will control this output. 
And it doesn't matter what this one is. But as soon as this one turns high, this one controls the, the output. No matter what this one is. So this one controls the output. Now, now these could be pretty cool. I mean, you could have a single door. Let's say an iron door. Do, 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 do. Iron door, where be you? There you are. So right now, this one controls the door. It'll open and close based on this one. Now you've got this other master switch. Now this one becomes low. Well now, this one won't open the door. At all. But this one will. I really like multiplexers. They can be really, really useful, especially for entrances of your bases. Based on, you know, what your switch is on. So let's say you go into, let's say you have a switch right here on your base, and you flip it on. What it'll do is it'll open the door for you. And as soon as you come in, you can close it, you know, inside, and then you can switch on another switch. Pretty sneaky. Let's say it's also, uh, let's say there's two switches here. Yeah. And as soon as you come inside and you switch on this switch, you know, this one won't, this one won't open the door. So let's say this one is this right one. It won't open the door. So let's say someone's breaking inside your house. And they come to this door and they see two switches. They're like, okay, well, what should I do? So they try to flip this one and nothing happens. Oh, well, that's because you're inside your base and you flipped on this switch. So this other person will try to flip on this switch. But this one, this one switch will activate, you know, some kind of lava pit or something. And it'll cause them to, you know, die, practically. So you can use a multiplexer for that. Pretty neat, eh? Next we have a counter. Counters are pretty neat. Three sticks, six stone, and five redstone dust. It'll remember how many times... It'll count up to a certain number, and then it'll output, practically. So let's say counter. So this one's one of the very first ones that actually uses the, the pointer. You got our cathodes, our wire, and then a bunch of blinks right here. Oh, wait. Now we got ourselves a counter. Look at all these redstone gates. Pretty neat, eh? So we've only got... We've got four inputs, practically. Not four inputs, uh... Well, we've got... I have to remember which one's the input, which one's the output. But if we right-click on this one, we can say, what's its maximum count? And then once it reaches this number, it'll uh, output something. And then we can increment it, using one side, and then we can also decrement it, and by how much. So we can set our decrement to be go down by 5, and our increment be 1. So this one right here will increment it, and this one will decrement it. So where is my letters? If I remember correctly. This one will decrement it. So right now it's, you know, at 0. And since I hit this one, it'll go up by one. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As soon as it hits ten, it'll output this way. If it's the opposite, if it's zero, then it'll output that way. And as you can see, it decremented by five, so I only had to do this twice. Five, ten. So now it's at 0, now it's outputting this way. As soon as this one gets incremented back up to 10, it'll output the other way. 
Aha. Decrement by five, decrement by five. Back down to zero. And you can set up your count to be however high you want it to be. And then you can set your intervals, which is pretty neat. Let's say you had some kind of like password or something like that, where you had to hit a button five times, and then another button four times, and then another button six times. You could use counters to do that. Next, we have a buffer gate. It's a pretty simple uh, thing. Two sticks, five stone, nine redstone dust. Usually, you don't use these buffer gates too often. What it'll do is it'll uh, keep a uh, a input practically. It's it's a buffer practically. So it's called a buffer gate. So the recipe is like this: we get ourselves a buffer gate. Buffer gate right there. It'll act as a buffer. And it's got that many outputs. You can kind of think of it as a repeater, practically, but with no delay. And then, you know, this one won't make a difference. Usually, if you're carrying, you know, a redstone signal, like long distances, because there is a limit to how many uh, th this wire can hold. So this one can go up to like, I don't know, like 200 or so blocks, or even more, probably even farther than that. What you could do is have this buffer gate here that'll refresh a signal, kind of like what a redstone torch does to vanilla redstone. But, you know, they've got two inverters right here, so, you know, it'll, uh, you know, always be whatever the input is. Pretty neat, eh? Because right now it's not, and then it gets inverted, then it gets inverted again, so now it's now back to not. Which is pretty neat. And it'll just hold an input. Probably not a whole lot of use for this one. Except for carrying, you know, redstone wire, you know, long distances. But there's always a there's always an alternative to that. You know, namely wireless redstone. But we'll get into that and do a more advanced circuitry, you know tutorial. I hope this tutorial teaches you, you know, the basics of all these uh, gates and uh, other, like, more complex circuitry like these latches and the multiplexer. All these things are very, very useful, especially for, uh, you know, in real world circuits and even in Minecraft. So I hope you found this tutorial uh, enjoyable and a uh, you know, ho hope hopefully you'll learn what all these, you know, gates do in Minecraft. And then maybe now you can go and design yourself uh, your your dream entrance or some kind of system that'll, you know, count for you or something like that in Minecraft. So I'm Lunchbox, and I'm signing off. Adios, and good night.